Hi, everyone. My name is Cristina Vicente Chicote, and I belong to the Kirkus Software Engineering Group of the University of Extremadura in Spain. Before I start, I would like to thank the organizers of this workshop for inviting me to deliver this talk about the key role of system level non functional properties in robotic software. Next, I will briefly introduce the topic before detailing the results obtained in the ROGME and the MIRON projects regarding the modeling and estimation of non functional properties. Non functional properties play a key role in most software intensive systems. While functional aspects deal with what the system does, non-functional ones deal with how it does it. There is a lot of literature on what non-functional properties are or how to classify them, but unfortunately, there is no consensus on how to deal with them. In fact, quite frequently, the terms non-functional property and non-functional requirement are considered equivalent, while they are not. For instance, the following definition states that, an, that a non-functional property of a software system is a constraint on the manner in which the system implements and delivers its functionality. The term constraint makes me think on a requirement rather than on a property. We will probably agree that a non-functional requirement is a constraint on a non-functional property. But leaving these little nuances aside, we can also agree that non-functional properties are usually difficult to define, measure, and manage independently, as they are usually interrelated. For instance, what does safety mean? Is there a general definition valid for robotics, telecommunications, and transportation systems? Even if we limit the definition to the robotic domain, does safety mean the same in an automated assembly line a Mars rover, a surgery robot, or an assistive robot aimed at reminding elderly people their medicines? Furthermore, does safety depend and to what extent on other non-functional properties such as reliability, performance, or resource consumption? And if they are interrelated and conflicting with each other, which one prevails on the others? For instance, if improving safety requires worsening performance, what should be prioritized? The objective of the ROGME and the MIRON integrated technical projects, both funded by the Horizon 2020 Rogmosis project, was to address these limitations, allowing designers to specify and manage non-functional properties, both at design time and at runtime. On the one hand, ROGME contributed a model-based framework enabling the modeling and runtime estimation of quality of service metrics defined on system-level non-functional properties such as safety, performance, or resource consumption, among many others. On the other hand, MIRON enabled the modeling and implementation of adaptive robot behaviors based on the evolution of the previous quality of service metrics, addressing their prioritization and the different situations while trying to keep them balanced. ROGME was built on the ROGMOS's meta models, models, and tools, while MIRON was built on ROGME and also on mood to be another ROGMOS's ITP aimed at creating, executing, and debugging behavior trees. The University of Extremadura coordinated both ROGME and MIRON. The University of Malaga was partnering both, and Biometric Box and Blue Ocean Robotics were partners in ROGME and MIRON, respectively. Let's briefly describe how these two ITPs have contributed to help designers deal with non functional properties, starting with ROGME. At design time, quality of service engineers can use the ROGME model editor to specify the relevant non functional properties, the available context sources, and a number of observations relating both. Let's see an example ROGME model defined for an infralogistic scenario. This model defines two non-functional properties, safety and performance, together with several context sources and observations. The meaning of the two properties in the particular infralogistic scenario considered in this demonstrator is described in the slide using natural language. These descriptions are not included as is in the ROGME model but encoded in the different observations appearing in it. 
These observations describe how positively, how positively or negatively, and to what extent, certain situations defined as context patterns impact on each non-functional property. Thus, when a bump is detected, safety is very highly undermined, while emergency breaks undermine both safety and performance, but less. Then the resulting Brockley model is used to generate and configure the runtime infrastructure needed to monitor the context, identify context patterns, and estimate through normalized metrics, the evolution of the non-functional properties previously modeled. These metrics then can be used by other components for different purposes. In fact, as described next, Miron uses the quality of service metrics provided by RobMe for adapting the robot navigation behavior. The complete infralogistics scenario in which RobMe was tested, together with all the Eclipse plugins developed as part of the project, are publicly available <clears throat> in the links included in this slide. As previously stated, Miron builds both on RobMe and Mutubi. The former provides Miron with quality of service metrics defined on non-functional properties, while the latter allows defining the robot course of action using behavior trees. At the same time, the, the Miron model speci uh, specifies both the variability of the system and the adaptation logic. The latter is based on a number of rules that specify which situations require a system reconfiguration and the positive and negative impact that selecting each particular variant may have on certain non-functional properties. It is worth noting that the Miron model takes as an input the Rogmi model defined for the scenario together with a nominal behavioral tree describing the robot course of action without adaptation. Then the Miron model defines a number of variation points, some of them related with system parameters, for example, the robot velocity, and others related with alternative or optional behaviors. The latter are bound both to behavior variants identified by the designers and to the point in the nominal behavior tree at which these variants will be weaved to cover all the supported behaviors. The Miron toolchain takes the final Miron model as an input and generates a self-adaptation engine component, which at runtime will continuously monitor the evolution of the RobMe quality of service metrics and according to the adaptation uh, rules previously designed, will reconfigure the robot behavior by prioritizing and trading off the different non-functional properties. The two scenarios in which Miron was tested, one in the context of assistive robotics and the other one in an infralogistic scenario, uh, together with all the materials developed as part of the project, are publicly available in the link displayed in this slide. Thus, to wrap up, we can conclude that dealing with non-functional properties is essential, but quite complex. RobMe allows the designer to specify in a quite natural way which non-functional properties are relevant in a particular scenario and which situations may affect them and to what extent. From this specification, the RobMe toolchain automatically generates a software component that monitors the context and provides quality of service metrics estimation for each of these non-functional properties based on the perceived situation. The quality of service metrics provided by Robmi have been successfully used in Miron to guide robot behavior adaptation at runtime. And this is all from my side. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye.